Welcome to the English Suite Podcast. I'm Jim Esch. On this episode, we celebrate National Poetry Month, April 2022. This was a simple show. I invited people in the Widener University community to contribute a poem. It could be a poem by someone else or a poem that they wrote themselves. So it's time to just sit back and enjoy some wonderful poetry. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did putting it together. I'm Jessica Guzman, Assistant Professor of English and Creative Writing. And this is Louise Glick's Circe's Power. I never turned anyone into a pig. Some people are pigs. I make them look like pigs. I'm sick of your world that lets the outside disguise the inside. Your men weren't bad men. Undisciplined life did that to them. As pigs, under the care of me and my ladies, they sweetened right up. Then I reversed the spell, showing you my goodness as well as my power. I saw we could be happy here, as men and women are when their needs are simple. In the same breath, I foresaw your departure, your men with my help braving the crying and pounding sea. You think a few tears upset me? My friend, every sorceress is a pragmatist at heart. Nobody sees essence who can't face limitation. If I wanted only to hold you, I could hold you prisoner. And this is Joy Harjo's Perhaps the World Ends Here. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow, We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. I'm Chloe de Flumery, and the poem I'm going to be reading is called A Pill of Pearl. I wrote it about a specific relationship I had and a series of relationships I had and like in reflection of the way that people interact, especially in like college romantically and what romantic relationships a lot of times are normalized to look and feel like when they're more casual Um, and how my experiences with that like cultural norm make me feel or like how I've seen them make the people I'm involved with feel. I submitted this poem to the Low Contest And I won, and it was really neat. It was so cool. It was the first time I ever submitted any piece of writing to be recognized 
um, or considered for an award. So I was really, really, I was surprised it won a little bit, to be honest, but I was also really, really excited. I also read it at um, this year's LGBTQ plus open mic that we hosted. A pill, a pearl. You learn to take compliments like pills with a cup of hot coffee. They suppress the appetite, they let you swallow deep. The same, I take you, a mouth of ocean water, my hair studded with sand, breath frozen in my chest. I take you, a shot of gin, numb burning brims in my eyes. You, your rush of cold water, comes over me. Bring your rough, calloused coldness, your tide a blanket, Swallow me, a pill, a pearl, consume me, and I promise my willful surrender is sweet. My name is Gabby Norris, and I'm reading a poem by Stefan Koza called Leaf Canopy. The dog days were a passing breeze with arms that couldn't quite reach the top shelf, Pulled by the entice of retreat, curved security was served on expensive plates, pieces of loose leaf. The shine dimmed its glare gradually, sinking into stiff couches and standing meals. Panic was howling in arrogant bliss. Behind me, shooting spitballs in my ears, kicking shins with steel-toed boots, sending the dogs to gnaw my ankles, little demons dangling strings overhead, tilting prayers and encouraging regret taunting my mud-coated shoes to rush the road with closed lids and failed system codes. I climbed a broken chimney, imagining smoke-towering trees, inhaled by an apathetic sky, dried leaves crunching while punching the air, nauseating guilt, swaying in sink, and I sank, staring up at the skinny tops, the branches crooked with attitude and arrogance. They are fascinated by the fasting. What I love about this poem and about Stefan's writing in general is his diction. He chooses these words that maybe are not the first we think of, but are the most appropriate for the feeling, maybe the image that he's trying to convey. And I typically stray away from lyrical poetry, except in Stefan's case. I feel like the images are just so irresistible and satisfying which is so good swaying in sink and I sank staring up at the skinny tops how cool I love the way he utilizes that it feels like feels like kind of a dance happening in your mouth as you say it Hi, my name is Ashley Serrano, and this is my poem, Prophetic Entropy. We're footnotes in this world, a clandestine existence bound to grow in the moonlight, but together we're the header of this chapter. You and I are purely entropic, like flower petals on love me nots. We're unpredictable. We fall apart, making room for something new. We are twin flames, you and I. Our incandescent glow marks the pages of this book. We are here, we tell them, and we are here to stay. We used to wax engrossed by the flame to seal the book and mark the pages, for when we get lost, we can return to this and revamp our love. Careful not to set ourselves ablaze and go down in flames. We strike a match to whisper our love and let it burn just before it reaches our finger. We are the cosmic flecks of the night, But many of the stars in the sky ceased to exist long ago, and reality has yet to catch up. My name is Courtney Farina, and I'm reading Good Bones by Maggie Smith. Life is short, though I keep this from my children. 
Life is short, and I've shortened mine in a thousand delicious, ill-advised ways. A thousand deliciously ill-advised ways I'll keep from my children. The world is at least 50% terrible, and that's a conservative estimate, though I keep this from my children. For every bird, there is a stone thrown at a bird. For every loved child, a child broken, bagged, sunk in a lake. Life is short, and the world is at least half terrible, and for every kind stranger, there is one who would break you, though I keep this from my children. I am trying to sell them the world. Any decent realtor, walking you through a real shithole, chirps on about good bones. This place could be beautiful, right? You could make this place beautiful. Next, we have a poem from Ken Pobo, who is a professor emeritus from Weiner University in English and Creative Writing. I have a poem for you. It's called, Get Up, Everything's Lavender. The sky turns lavender, and people in lavender nightgowns and pajamas fetch lavender newspapers. The news, completely and utterly lavender. This lavender world could change back quickly. Why not make a day of it? A lavender day when Betty Davis goes fishing and hooks a lavender trout. I drive until it's twilight time, when heavenly shades of night are falling and the lavender moon falls from the sky like a celery stick into a lavender dip. Thank you, and everyone have a nice lavender day. This is a poem by Marie Howe, and it's called Annunciation. Even if I don't see it again, nor ever feel it, I know it is, and that if once it hailed me, it ever does. And so it is myself I want to turn in that direction, not as towards a place, but it was a tilting within myself as one turns a mirror to flash the light to where it isn't. I was blinded like that and swam in what shone at me, only able to endure it by being no one and so specifically myself. I thought I'd die from being loved like that. Let's finish up with a poem read by Professor Tara Friedman. In honor of National Poetry Month, I want to read Don't Quit by Edgar Albert Guest. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out the silver tint, the cloud of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It might be near when it seems far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when the things seem worse that you must not quit. The English Suite is produced by Jim Esch and students at Widener University. Shapressa Yimurai, Siana Bowers, Gabby Norris, Chloe DeFlumery, and Courtney Farina. Music in this episode was produced by Jim Esch and Stacey Tartaresh. You can find our podcast at anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and other podcast directories. 
We would love to hear your feedback, announcements, and suggestions. Send an email to WideNerEnglishSuite at gmail.com. We always thank you for listening and hope you'll tune back again soon. Bye-bye.